are some situations where we have an addition or a subtraction of a sine and cosine function acting on the same angle. And it's harder to work with in that form. Um, if we could get it where it was just a, maybe an amplitude change and a phase shift on one of those trig functions and still mean the same thing, it would be much easier to work with. Whether we're solving equations or graphing functions or whichever those cases might be. In this video, we're going to talk about how to take an expression that is in the form of a numerical multiplication of sine of an angle and then plus a numerical multiplication of cosine of that same angle that the sine was acting on and actually take that and write that as an equivalent equa expression that is just a multiple of sine of that angle with a phase shift. Now, in doing this, there are specifics about how you get each of these components when making that transition. The first one is k, this new coefficient in front of your sine function, is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So you get k by taking the square root of the coefficient that's in front of the sine at uh, angle, quantity squared, plus the coefficient that's in front of the cosine of the angle that squared. So our k is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now alpha, how do we find that angle in the phase shift? Well it has to be the angle that meets both the conditions that if I were to take the sine of that angle I would get the ratio of the coefficient in front of the cosine over that k value, the square root of a squared plus b squared. Also if I took cosine of that angle, it would be the same as the ratio of the coefficient from in front of the sine of the original expression over the square root of a squared plus b squared. So sometimes in different books they might have this a little bit rearranged and you don't want to get tied too much to a and b as letters in the numerator of these ratios. You just want to think for the sine of the angle for the phase shift, you're going to take the coefficient from in front of the cosine term over the k. And then for the cosine of the angle, you're going to take the coefficient in front of the sine over the term. So you're, you're making this kind of mixture back to um, the roots where it comes from when we are looking at our um, identity for actually the sine of the sum of two angles and kind of working backwards on it. But in this, we're not going to like develop it. We're just going to show this example. So here it says to graph y equal negative 1 sine x plus the square root of 3 cosine x by writing it in the form. So I'm going to write this in the form k sine x plus alpha and then graph this y equal k times the sine of x plus alpha. So let's start by just looking at this expression and bringing it through. So I have my y is equal to, well that's negative 1 times sine x plus the square root of 3 times the cosine of x. So here, my a is negative 1, and my b is the square root of 3. So k is going to be the square root of negative 1 in parentheses squared plus the square root of 3 in parentheses squared. Now remember, you have to follow your order of operations and you have to make sure that you are careful about realizing that it's negative one quantity squared. So negative one quantity squared is one, plus the square root of three squared is three, and one plus three under there is four. So k is the square root of four, which gives me a k value of two. So that gives me my k. I already have this coefficient then. So next up, I need to find the alpha. Well, the alpha has to be the angle such that the sine of that angle alpha is the coefficient in front of the cosine over the k. So it's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. And it's also true that the cosine of that alpha is equal to the coefficient from in front of the sine over 2, so negative a half. So I want to think, okay, as far as reference angles go, what reference angle will have a cosine ratio of a half and a sine ratio of the square root of 3 over 2? Well, that's a nice angle. That's pi over 3. But that's 
the reference angle. Now, what quadrant does an angle have to be in so that the cosine ratio is negative and the sine ratio is positive? Well, from the origin, like with the unit circle, you would have to go left and up. So it would be in the second quadrant. So the over three angle that's in the second quadrant is my alpha being two pi over three. So now I'm ready to write my equation. It's y is equal to k, so two in our problem, times the sine of x plus my angle is two pi over three. So that made it much easier to graph because we can think back to when we were graphing trig functions and we had our amplitude changes and our phase shifts and all of that. So our basic function here is the sine function. So remember we're gonna like kind of build off of doing the work with our basic function. So our basic, basic function of sine x, well sine of zero is zero, sine of pi over two is one, sine of pi is zero, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and sine of 2 pi is 0. So here's our sine of x. Now this also has an amplitude of the absolute value of 2, which is 2. So every one of those y outputs we're going to multiply by 2. So 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and 2 times 0 is 0. So here is our y equal 2 sine x. And then the last thing we need to take care of is our phase shift. Now remember, our phase shift, we take what the um, trig function is acting on and set it equal to 0. So if x plus 2 pi over 3 is equal to 0, subtract your 2 pi over 3 from both sides, x is negative 2 pi over 3, that's the one that would be comparable to being your like 0 angle and where it got shifted to. So this um, y equal 2 sine of x plus 2 pi over 3 has our amplitude of basic function or basic graph of sine amplitude of 2, and a phase shift of 2 pi over 3 to the left, okay? So now each of these angles, we're going to take the dot that's at the value right now, we're going to move it 2 pi over 3 to the left. So if I'm at an angle of 0 and I go left 2 pi over 3, I'm at an angle of negative 2 pi over 3. And if I'm at an angle of pi over 2 and I go left, 2 pi over 3, well think about it with fractions. So if I'm at an angle of pi over 2 and I go left 2 pi over 3, I need to get common denominators to put this together better. So common denominator is 6. I'll multiply top and bottom of pi over 2 by 3. That's 3 pi over 6. Minus top and bottom of the next fraction by 2. So that's 4 pi over 6. And 3 pi over 6 minus 4 pi over 6 is a negative pi over 6. So this dot that has a y coordinate of positive 2 is going to move to negative pi over 6 angle. So negative pi over 6 comma 2. And then for pi, subtract 2 pi over 3, you're going to be at pi over 3 to where it has its 0. And then when I have 3 pi over 2, and I subtract the 2 pi over 3, so 3 pi over 2, subtract the 2 pi over 3. Again, get your common denominators. So 9 pi over 6 minus 4 pi over 6 gives me a 5 pi over 6. That's where I'm going to have the negative 2. And then finally, when I take 2 pi 
and subtract 2 pi over 3. Well, 2 pi is 6 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3 gives me a 4 pi over 3. So I'm going to move that to 4 pi over 3. And that's where it's 0 again. So we have then our graph of our final function that is here. So I was able to use all of the information that I'd already gained when I was doing the graphing with my shifts and my amplitude change and all of that um, by transitioning this two term with sine and cosine acting on the same angle to uh, amplitude change and phase shift of a sine function. And again, it's not just going to be um, something that's useful in the graphing problems. It will also show up again when we're looking at solving trig equations and maybe we have a trig equation that's involved in a form such as that.